Go for it.
This morning as we gather, I can look outside and I see the sun shining. I see God's creation bursting forth as spring is coming forth. How great is our God? Let's worship Him and Him alone this morning. Reckless love. 
We persecuted him. We nailed him to a tree, and yet he loved us. He died for us and saved us. This next song talks about that. I love that God has a love that goes beyond all understanding.
here before us this morning are the ones who picked the worship set, and I thought the last song they picked is just so appropriate for a time that we are living in right now. I raise a hallelujah. This is the final song we're going to have in our worship set. I just want to read you a little bit of the words. You see them on the screen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. So many times we think of enemies as someone who attacks us, and we don't think of it in the forms of a virus. But that's what we're facing now. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. My weapon is a melody. It goes on to say in the chorus, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. This morning, that is our prayer. That in the midst of all the ashes that seem to be around us, hope arises because Jesus has risen from the grave. And we can trust in that fact this morning.
Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today. In a world that is very different from what we're used to in gathering on Sunday mornings. And we praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We know that you are still the God that is in control. How great it is to be in your presence. And we raise a hallelujah. The melody is our weapon as we face what's going on in the world now. Lord, be with us in this service and as we look into your word this morning. Give us your wisdom. Fill us with your guidance and your direction, Lord, as we seek to understand this world that we live in now. Thank you for who you are and that you are the God who stands in the midst of all the troubles and the difficulties that we face in life. That you are there in control. Be with us now, Lord. For we pray this in your son's precious name. So we are glad that you've joined us, whether you're online, um, however you're joining us. Uh, there were about 60 people who joined us um, in our early service. I think we're at about 30 or 40 or somewhere around there now um, joining us, and we're glad you're here. Um, you could be joining us as one of our uh, local worshipers, and maybe you're at home watching, um, and we're glad that you're joining with us. We have a couple of, of things that we want to talk to you about. Um, we know there's also people who have joined us all around our community and in our state and in our world and even internationally. Last week we had someone from Kenya who joined us, and we're glad that you're here. We just want to give you some instructions of some things that we're doing and how some things are going to change in the church uh, while we're in the midst of this difficult, difficult time. So just a couple of instructions. So meeting together. Uh, we are not going to meet together. Um, for the foreseeable future, we continue to evaluate this on a weekly basis, depending on, on what our governor says, depending on the recommendations of our president and our region. Our region has actually said that uh, they think that we should not be meeting the Allegheny Region Conference, so we ask uh, that we're going to abide by those things, so please take note of that. We will continue to update you as things change. At some point, we're going to gather together again. We're going to put notices out. We're on our one call system. If you want to be part of our calling system, please let us know. You can text us or email us, and we'll put you on and include you in that. Um, also, we're going to be putting stuff on Facebook. We're also going to be increasing our online presence in some other ways, looking at some other venues of how we're going to post online, and even doing some Bible studies online. Uh, Sean and the youth are experimenting with that this week a little bit, and we're going to push forward into that in some other areas also. So please uh, just take note of that and kind of watch for those kind of things happening. So in the midst of this, we talked last week about a number of ministry opportunities that would be available. Um, so a couple of things we talked about, maybe delivering meals to the children. Um, that's not been able to be worked out yet. There's some regulations and some stuff that we need to work through yet. Um, if you know children who are going without food, you can let us know. We're going to see that those will be provided for. Um, but one of the things that we have done is uh, the Confluence Ministerium got together. Many of you in our area there in the Fort Hill, Addison, or Confluence area might receive a mailing that looked like this. Uh, this mailing uh, instructs people who um, are afraid to go out or who need things like uh, basic necessities, food, medicines, other things. If they're afraid to go out, they can call one of us as a pastor. And we will um, get some people who would be willing to go and do that. Um, so feel free to, to take use of this in our community. Please let others know, especially those that are vulnerable, that, that aren't able to go out and, and risk getting sick. Um, please make this known so that there is a group of people who are willing to do that. Along those lines, if you'd be interested in doing that, um, we would invite you to text our texting service, the one where you see text from our church. Um, if you don't have that, you can text to 1-877-202-3214. That is on our Facebook page also, that number. Once again, 1-877-202-3214. And say that you're willing to help us with that. You can just put in there, uh, willing to deliver food and other items. And we'll put you on that list. Um, also, if you'd like to share with us praises, ways you see God at work in your life in the midst of all the struggles, please uh, send them to that text. Also send any prayer requests to that text. Um, you can also contact Pastor Sean or I through our cell phones, whether you're texting us or calling us. Um, obviously, we can't visit hospitals right now, but we'd love to call someone and pray with them uh, during this time and meet their needs as best as we can and the restrictions that are put upon us at this time. 
So just a couple of things about that. Also, in regards to our regular attenders and those who support this local body, I've had a number of questions about how they can continue to give. There's a number of ways that we have established for you to do that. One, you can mail a check. Just like you've always done, you can put it in the mail, um, put it to our church address, 405 Park Street, Confluence, and we will um, see if that is added into our time. Uh, we've also opened up a new uh, way of giving. You can now give online. You go to our website, unitedcommunityweb.org, and there is a donate button on our website. It's actually a PayPal button. Uh, where uh, you can do that right now and donate, and you can actually set up if you want to give on a monthly basis. It'll be a recurring payment or a one-time payment. You can also designate where your money goes in that respect. Um, we're also working on some other venues, such as the Facebook giving. Uh, those take a little time to set up. And if you're not comfortable with any of those and you want to drop off a check or cash to us, you can contact Pastor Sean or myself, myself and we can uh, give you ways that we can meet with you or give you a secure way to drop off uh, those donations. So uh, please feel free to contact us with any questions you have about that. We're going to kind of put um, some announcements about our ministry kind of in that segment uh, right here before our sermon in the future, uh, trying to pick up the people that maybe come in a little bit later rather than at the beginning of our service. Uh, so just keep note of that. So this morning I actually posted the scripture references we're going to be using online. Um, in our Facebook page, we're going to be in a couple of different passages. Our main passage is coming from John chapter 4, uh, verses 4 to 26, and then we will be uh, going into some passages in Romans. So once again, these are on our Facebook page. If you want to go online and look at them, please feel free to do so. John chapter 4, beginning with verse 4, going down through verse 26. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus, tried as tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food, and the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, who is that that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And soon the woman said, You have nothing to draw with from the well, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water, uh, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Then. She replied, Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is that you've had five husbands, and the man you are now with is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has come now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dearly Father, we come before you today and we thank you for your word. We ask that you help us as we dive into this word, as we look at it uh, today, that you give us wisdom and guidance and direction as we look into it and as we draw from it and apply it during these very difficult times. Praise in your son's precious name. Amen. I need to tell you that the uh, the direction from tonight to tonight, this morning's sermon, I don't know why I said tonight, um, this morning's sermon kind of came from a conversation <laughs> Sean and I had this week. And he was telling me a conversation that he had with someone at, at one of the places he was. And, he said he was in the midst of, of doing his job and was in some place and there was this woman who was kind of talking to him about uh, this whole situation and everything that was going on. 
And he said that, and she said to him, you know, it, it all seems so hopeless, and, and, and you know, what is going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. And, and Sean said, well, it is. He said, you know, I'm not, I'm not extremely worried about the virus. You know, many of us that are younger won't have an issue with it. And he said, you know, if I should happen to die from it, he goes, I know that I'll uh, go into, uh, into God's presence in heaven. And uh, he, he kind of talked to her a little bit about that. And, and she went on to say, well, you know, if something happens to me, I know that I'll get a good suntan and um, I'll be partying with lots of people. Sean said he was really moved by that. He said, you know, um, I, I tried to tell her, you know, that's not the kind of place you think you're going to end up in. You know, it, it, it's, it's some place you don't want to be. And he started trying to tell her a little bit about God and, and the understanding of heaven and hell. And in the midst of that, she said, I don't need to hear any of that and shut him down. We as a church have said over and over again that we desire to be God's light and salt in our world. We desire for God to give us the ability to witness and to share his love. And I believe that right now in the midst of all that's happening with this virus and the way that, that people are just in a state of panic, we have the opportunity to speak into people's lives. We have the opportunity to give them the hope of Jesus and of who he is. And I believe that God has prepared the soil for the seed that he wants us to plant. We might not see it grow now, but I believe that the, the, the soil is fertile and ready for God's seed of who he is and what he wants to do to be planted in the lives of people right now. As we look at this passage this morning, Jesus is traveling through this area called Samaria. Now, if we were to be looking at a map, we could actually see that Samaria was, was a country that kind of sat in the middle of some of the area that the Jews traveled in. But the Jews so much did not like Samaria, they would often travel miles out of their way to go around Samaria. And so here we have Jesus and his followers, his disciples, going through this area of Samaria, and they stop at this well, and this woman comes out, and it's in the middle of the day. It's not a time when, when women are usually there drawing water. Um, you know, she probably did not want to be around other women. And, and Jesus is at this, this well, and he asks her for a drink, and she's shocked, first of all, because he's a Jew, and she's a Samaritan, and Jews don't talk to Samaritans. But then they go on to have this conversation about water. And Jesus talks to her about living water. It's interesting, in the midst of this conversation, Jesus says to her, you know, go and get your husband and bring him here. She says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you're right, you don't. You've had five husbands. And the man you're currently with is not your husband. You see, I believe that in this woman's life, God had prepared the ground. It was a fertile ground, ready to receive the seed that Jesus was going to plant. You know, as we look at this, Jesus then goes on to talk about the fact that he is the promised Messiah. Now, I, I cut off this passage. We didn't read the rest of it. But if we read the rest of it, we see this woman coming to know who Jesus is and coming to a greater understanding of him. And then Jesus tells her to go back and to tell others. And she goes and she tells others about this man who's told her all of the things of her life. It was in the midst of this that she was able to receive the word that Jesus had for her. I believe that people are at a point in their life right now where they're ready to receive the word that Jesus has for them. And I think that we as a church need to be ready. We need to be ready to present that word to them. I want to just go over a couple of things, the ways that we can share Christ's love. And I... Um, I share this at every funeral that I do. This is actually you know, just a, a whole series of verses that are fall out of the book of Romans. But I think it's a great way for us to explain to people about God's love for them. Now, these are all on our Facebook page. I put them all in there. Um, and you can go and, and write them down if you want. But I, but I would encourage you, rather than writing them down, and, and rather than pulling out your Bible when someone um, asks you about them, why not memorize them? They're, they're, they're just small verses, they're not long. Or if you can't memorize the context, at least remember what each verse says so that you can talk to someone about that. In Romans 3.23, we read, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. As we look at this verse, it talks about the fact of sin in our life. Sin is what separates us from God. It's what keeps us from God. And sin is in all of our lives. I talk about this at every funeral because I want people to recognize the fact that, that our life is full of sin. 
And not only is our life full of sin, but we got to recognize how this world talks about that sin. This world says, oh, it's okay. As long as the good in your life outweighs the bad, they view it as this big scale that's there. And as long as, as this part that's good outweighs this part that's bad, you're going to make it into heaven. And that is a lie of this world. We cannot be believing that lie. And we need to help the world to see that. We need to help the world to also see that hell is not a place where all everyone's going to be partying. It's not like this great big party. In fact, you know, as we look into to scripture, we see that hell is separation from God. And it's also separation from other people. I believe that when we are, the, 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 the people that enter into hell will not have contact with other people. People think, oh, it's going to be a great party. I'll get to see all my friends. I actually don't think that you're going to see anyone. You're going to be separated from your God who loves you. You're going to be separated from your friends. That's what's going to happen for eternity. If you look in Romans, we go on to see in Romans 6, 23, the very first part of it, for the wages of sin is death. That sin that separates us from God causes death. And there's nothing that we can do. There's no way we can mend that. There's nothing that you and I can do ourselves. It doesn't matter how good we are. It doesn't matter how much money we give to the church. It doesn't matter what all we do. That does not reconcile us to God. And that doesn't correct the sin situation. And if that verse ended at that point, we'd have no hope. But it goes on to say in the rest of that verse, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is through Jesus Christ that we come to know who God is, and it's only through him that we are saved. It happens no other way. It's not by how good we are. It's through Jesus. In a couple of weeks, we're going to celebrate Easter Sunday, and I don't know what it's going to look like. Sean and I have already been talking. We're not sure if we're going to be allowed to gather then. But well, we have some unique things we're, we're thinking about. So stay tuned. Um, you know, in the midst of all of this, God is challenging us to look at ministry in a whole new way. You know, back in, in January, I actually preached a sermon that I talked about the state of our church. And I said, ministry is going to change drastically in the next 10 years. I didn't realize that it was actually going to change drastically in the next three months. <laughs> but here we are. But in a couple of weeks, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. The grave could not hold him. So how do we enter into God's presence? How do we accept this gift of salvation is offered to us? In Romans 10, 9, we read, If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. If we confess he is Lord, and we believe that in our hearts, we will be saved. And I'm going to tell you, when that happens, change happens in our life. If we truly confess Him as our Lord and Savior, it's going to make us want to live the life that He's called us to live. Sometimes people believe that's just a magical formula. Well, I've confessed Him as Lord and Savior, and I'm okay, and uh, so then I don't need to think about it again. I think we think about our walk with Jesus on a daily basis. How we're showing Him or not showing Him to the world that The final verse I want to lift out this morning is Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, there's that word we talked about last week, last week, peace. We're in a world that desperately needs peace. It needs God's peace. There's so much stuff going on, so much confusion, so much fright and fear, so much of that happening in our world. We need peace. We need God's peace. So this week I want to challenge the United Community Church, our local body, and now our online body. I might never get to really talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, but I want to challenge you in your walk with the Lord. First of all, have you made the decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you've not done that and you want some help or you want to talk to someone, please contact me or Pastor Sean. We'd love to talk with you. And we'll have a phone conversation, whatever we need to do. And second of all, are you prepared to give an answer when other people say, why can you live with peace? Why can you, how can you live in the midst of this world today? 
Pastor Sean was ready when that question was posed to him. Are you ready? Are you ready to respond with God's love for a world that desperately needs it during this time? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dearly Father, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you for your peace, and we thank you for how you use us, Lord. And we ask that you use us as a church in a mighty way, Lord, that we would show your light in this world, this world that so desperately needs to see it right now. Guide us, direct us. Let us be your example, your salt, your light in this world. Let us make a difference where you have planned us, Lord, right here. We pray this in your son's precious name. We want to thank you for joining with us this morning. I want to thank the praise team for coming and, and leading us. And uh, we will see you next week. We'll keep you informed as to things that are coming up. And uh, we will see you next week. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything, please you can leave them in the comments section or contact us. Thank you. Have a great day. In the Lord.